Hello friends, welcome to this video. If you are new, my name is Ashton. Hello, nice to meet you. Glad we could have this interaction. I wanted to talk to you guys about my top five TV shows of 2022. Now, a few weeks ago, there was kind of this tweet going around that was like, you know, forget your Spotify wrapped, how about your TV show wrapped? And so it was more so of just what was your favorite TV shows, not really like your most watched shows. So I went ahead and did a little Instagram story, but I thought it'd be fun to make a video about it and kind of go into more detail, like why these are my top five and what the shows are even about. And I feel like some of the shows that I watched uh, that are my favorite from last year, not a lot of people know about them. So let's jump into this. Okay, I'm gonna start at number five and then go to number one. So number five actually is a pretty big one uh, for a lot of people, but it is Only Murders in the Building. This is a Hulu original show. Oh my goodness, this trio could not have been cast any better. I started to watch Only Murders in the Building probably like the end of 2021, but didn't really get to jump into it until 2022. And I watched like half of the first season earlier in the year and then like finished the series with the second season later in the year. And it's, it's funny, it's intense, you know, there's a mystery, I mean, if you're new here, we love Scooby-Doo here and some mystery shows. Mm. I really enjoyed it. It definitely isn't a show that I feel like I can just like re-watch, you know, all the time. Like it's, it's not one that I feel like I can just kind of put on over and over, but it definitely has like a gripping story that I, I needed to know, you know, how it ended. I needed to know who and what and how and stuff. And super excited because it did get renewed for a third season which is great because left off on another cliffhanger and i was like uh-uh we ain't we ain't stopping there no now now we gotta go into this mystery so selena gomez come on mm. i love wizards of waverly place obviously that was how i was introduced to her and i was so excited to see her in another show and it was a great show to see her acting again you know then we have steve martin who he is to me he is the dad in cheaper by the dozen that's kind of how i was introduced to him i mean i know he's done a range of other films and i've seen him a little bit in other stuff but i was excited to see him again in a different role and stuff and it was really interesting to see him in a little more of a an adult oriented role rather than like a family friendly role then of course martin short i honestly haven't seen like a whole lot of his roles uh the most notable for me to be honest is jack frost from santa claus 3 the escape clause so i feel like i have a lot of uh martin short to catch up on but it was really interesting to see him in this role and I mean, his personality, I feel like, comes through his character and stuff. And then, you know, them bouncing off between each other. It's great show. Great show. Number five. Thank you. Okay, number four. This one is an interesting one. This is one that a lot of people don't know about and is very under the radar. So my number four is actually Disney's Intertwined. Now, this is a show that is originated in Argentina. And so it has been dubbed in English, you know, if you don't know the Spanish language or any of the other languages that they do, um, but they have dubbed it in English. And the reason that this caught my eye originally, besides actually the really cool plot of going back in time and stuff, is my favorite musical is the Freaky Friday musical. If you all didn't know, there's a Freaky Friday musical that came out right around like 2016, 2017 time. Um, and then they eventually made a Disney Channel movie based on it, which the movie is definitely not as good as the actual stage production. I enjoyed the movie, but I know a lot of people didn't. They incorporated the play into this show and that's first what pulled me in. I was like, hold up, we're doing something with Freaky Friday the Musical. What, what is going on? And so I decided to watch it and let me tell you, 
The first season is only 10 episodes, but each episode is roughly, roughly an hour. I mean, it's probably in that like 40 minute range. I watched the entire first season in one night. <laughs> like, I stayed up way too late and just watched it. I was instantly pulled into this. So what this show is about is this girl really wants to be a part of this like theater program called 11 o'clock. Her grandma used to be such a big star and such a big uh, part in 11 o'clock and everything, but something happened in the past between her grandma and her mother that has just really just torn the family apart and now her mother doesn't want her to join 11 o'clock and ra would rather her join her bookstore that she owns um, and she really doesn't have a relationship with her grandma but then her mother gets into an unfortunate car accident and that brings her grandma to aid and help everything and in the process of all this um, the main girl accidentally finds this bracelet um, hiding in the walls of her bedroom and basically it takes her back in time to when her mom was her age back in the 90s um, and every time she goes back and forth now she doesn't have control of when she goes back and forth it just happens but every time she goes back and forth um, a knot on the bracelet unties because she's figuring out stuff every time she goes back but the problem is as she's going back into the past you know that's not her time her time is in the present she falls in love with a boy from the past and so that all kind of gets messy and stuff so it is a bit of a musical just because they are putting on a stage production of freaky friday and everything which i love musicals and stuff but it's so cool to see them go back into the 90s now i was born in 97 so i was like the tail end of the 90s so i don't know if i consider myself a 90s baby or whatever but um but it's so cool to see them go back and forth and stuff but how they do this story is so good and i love this show now it's already been renewed for two more seasons which i'm very happy because this left on such a good cliffhanger you know it's it, it was one of those cliffhangers because i feel like they really wrapped up the story in season one and i thought they were just going to wrap it up and it was going to be a one season show but they really pulled a plot twist at the end that was like new story here we go new story for season two so very excited for season two i'm thinking it's coming out this year it better be but i'm very excited and honestly recommend that one to everybody that one is a family friendly show so everybody could watch it okay number three for me is heartstopper this has gained so much traction within this past year or so heartstopper is a netflix series that is based on a graphic novel which was originally like a a webtoons i believe but it's i mean it's a gay love story basically about this kid who is already gay and he was in a relationship, but not very good one. And he falls in love with who he thinks is a straight boy, but then this other boy kind of gets mixed up in his feelings and is like, oh, am I gay? Am I bisexual? And so it's a really like soft, tender show and it's so cute. It's done so in such a cute way, but you know, about one kid falling in love with a boy and the other falling in love with the boy as well but also going through the process of figuring out his sexuality and his identity and everything and it was it's a very easy watch i feel like it is so cute and just light-hearted and everything uh so i'm very excited because it has already been renewed and they've actually wrapped up filming season two already so season two should be coming out this year I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm in the process of reading the graphic novels right now, so maybe I will learn kind of more of the story than what's already been presented in the show if I finish reading, you know, ahead of time. But that one was just, it was just such a like good, easy, fun, lighthearted show to watch. And 
honestly, that's something I recommend everybody. Like, if you need an easy into, like, the LGBTQ shows, I feel like that's a good one to kind of get into and, you know, get a feel of it. Okay, number two. <sighs> Young Royals. Netflix. Young Royals. So I watched Heartstopper first and then Young Royals. Watched them pretty much back to back. I did not know. I did not know what the story was for Young Royals going into it. Just kind of blindly went into it. And I fell in love with it so fast. So Young Royals is actually a show from Sweden. So it has been dubbed in English. Most of the stars actually do their own dub dubbing in English, which is amazing. So all of these actors and actresses, I just need all the awards because this show is so good to me. This show is how I was introduced to my husband, my biggest celebrity crush now, Omar Rudberg. Let me tell you, this man. <clears throat> so this show is basically about a prince uh, from Sweden you know, he's not like the crown prince because he has an older brother who is the crown prince, but he kind of wants to live like a normal life. You know, I just want to have fun and not be all into the royal family and stuff. So his parents send him off to this like very strict school, you know, like you eat very properly and you do stuff at a certain time and da 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 da. And he ends up falling in love with this boy, Simone. Simone is from kind of the the rundown parts of you know this this place in Sweden um, but he's been accepted to go to this school with his sister um, and they they end up following in love and then throughout the show actually the prince the prince's brother ends up dying of an accident so then he becomes the crown prince so then it's this whole thing of well, we have to cover this up, you know, like, you can't have this gay relationship, you need to do this and this, you're the crown prince, you have to protect our family image, and you have to do this, and he's like, I don't, I don't want this, mm-mm. So I watched all two seasons basically back to back, and that season finale, they have been renewed for season three, bless it's gonna be the last season but i appreciate that because it feels like they can wrap up the story in this next season and i i appreciate that for them not prolonging it and just like dragging out a story but this show is just so good and i feel like so many people need to watch it for so many reasons not only because of the lgbtq representation but also just kind of a generational thing of like I don't want to keep doing that, mother. Like, that was your generation. We're going to change things up a bit here and stuff, you know. So, I don't know. It's such a good show. I, it's it's not one that I would really recommend watching with kids. Wait until they get a bit older. Overall, a great, great show and one of my absolute tops for 2022. It That show and Omar Rudberg is the reason I have started to take... Uh, Swedish lessons. I have done over a month now of Swedish lessons and my number one for 2022. Now it's not a new show that I watched last year, but they did have a new season. I think we already know. If you know me, I think we already know. High School Musical, the musical of the series. We had season three in 2022. This was a summer season. It was the shortest season. It's fine. It's fine. Wow. I This is my comfort show if a lot of you don't know. I f found this show when it originally came out in 2019 when Disney Plus was launching and fell in love with it super fast. I mean, I love musicals. But then season two came out in 2021 and that one was such a big season for me because it came out right around the time that I came out, if you get what I mean. And it has just been a comfort show for me. And so seeing season three and seeing the transition of a lot of the stories and the characters, you know, we have 
Olivia Rodrigo is leaving the show now, so they had a great send off for her. I really, really enjoyed how they kind of wrapped her character up, but still left it that if she wanted to come back for like an episode or two later down the line, like she still could. I could see ways of her coming back um, as like guest star appearances and stuff. Um, but then kind of like almost handing the torch to uh, Sophia Wiley and being like, this is your show now, you know, which I think is really, really cool. We already have season four coming out this year. It has been filmed and I am so excited. Season three, although is the shortest season so far of this show, I have to say it was done really well. When I first heard that they were going to have high school musical songs, Frozen songs, Camp Rock songs, plus original songs, I was like, you're going to do all that in eight episodes? Excuse me? They did it very well. Very, very well. And I'm pleased with the song selection. And I now I'm so excited to see what they're going to do for season four because if you guys don't know, season four is going to be so meta. They are putting on a production of High School Musical 3 while at the school they are filming High School Musical 4. I, mm -hmm. I also am very interested in how Matt Cornette, um, his character of EJ, how they're going to incorporate him into it now because like, spoiler alert, um, him and Gina broke up by the end of season three and EJ is graduated. So like he really has nothing holding him back to the school now. So I'm very inter interested to see how he's even gonna play into this next season. But very, very great season for 2022 for season three. It definitely was a great season and show for me because it, um, it came out right at the time that I kind of was transitioning my year because I feel like my 2022 was two different years in one and it definitely was airing at the time that I was transitioning and really was kind of my comfort while I was moving on from a lot of things, letting go of a lot of things and changing myself and my life, better myself and to make myself really ha actually happy. You know, it was a great show to be like, my actual happiness you know like help me get through and find my actual happiness and it was great so anyways guys there is my top five shows for 2022 i do have a few kind of like honorable mentions um i will say just beyond on disney plus was a great show too um that's it's kind of like a spooky ish ish show kind of like goosebumps or the haunting hour you know because it is done you know, based on R.L. Stein's work. Another one is Parallels on Disney Plus. I actually have not finished this yet. I need, I basically just need to rewatch it, just finish it at this point. But that is a sci-fi show about timelines and stuff, and it's really, really interesting. It is actually a uh, show from France. So, but I definitely would recommend that one too. But I personally haven't finished it yet, but I'm excited to finish it. So guys, there is my top five shows of 2022. Let me know your favorite shows that you watched last year. What are your top five shows of 2022? I love to know, are there any recommendations that I should be watching? I know I have like a backlog of shows I need to watch. I know people have been saying like Secret of, of Soul for Soul for Springs, is that what you said? There's one called Evermore I wanna watch. There's a new one. I want to watch. I don't remember the name, so I can't even. Means nothing to you guys. It's on Disney Plus. It's a horror show, horror mystery. I want to watch that. There's so much to watch, but let me know yours down in the comments below. I love to see your guys' recommendations and what you guys enjoyed. Maybe there is some stuff I'm missing out, and hopefully, I give you guys some recommendations. So let me know. Definitely, let me know if you end up watching any of the shows that I just listed in this video and I love to hear what you all think and that's gonna do it. So thank you all so much for watching this video. If you are not following my socials, links to those are down in the description for easy access for you guys. And yeah, so until the next one, I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.